Welcome to Courtside, everyone, a discussion of the post-election litigation brought by Donald Trump and pals. Well, it's day 35 after the election. Trump did it. He managed to make 50 losses today. And because Trump can't do anything without losing on a grand scale, he actually made it 52. Ours goes to 52. And happy Safe Harbor Day, everyone. Yes, today is the day that electoral votes are made extra super specialicious. It is now virtually impossible to challenge the counts in the various states. And every state actually made the Safe Harbor deadline except for Wisconsin. And I know sometimes when we look at the American system, when we look at some old decisions made 100, 200 years ago, and we think, what in the world? Like the Electoral College, what's that about? Slavery. Um, but this is one that actually makes sense. Congress passed something called the Electoral Count Act decades ago, and it was all about voting shenanigans. Maybe not Trumpian levels of voting and shenanigans, but mischief nonetheless. And so what Congress said is that if you get your votes in states by December 8th, it's nearly impossible to challenge them. And you may recall, we talked about this yesterday. That's why Justice Alito moved up the deadline in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court case to this morning so that the court, Supreme Court could decide the case before the strictures of the Electoral Count Act kicked in. And yes, huge news tonight out of the U.S. Supreme Court. They denied this silly Pennsylvania case. Remember, this is the case where the Trumpistas tried to throw out election results in the entire state because, gasp, they allowed mail-in voting. The Supreme Court set, ended this saga in one sentence. The case is over. But not for Jenna Ellis, President Trump's lawyer, or as I call her, your. She tweeted, quote, The Supreme Court only denied emergency injunctive relief. It did not deny cert. Mike Penny Pelly cert is suit is still pending before the U.S. Supreme Court. Well, there are a few problems with this. Maybe the most important one is this. Ooh, they forgot they never filed a certiorari petition. Okay, a certiorari petition. We talked about this yesterday as well. Is the legal paper saying, "Hey, Supreme Court, hear my case." And as I said yesterday, the Supreme Court gets about ten thousand of those requests a year, and. They didn't get one, however, one of the 10,000 this year was not from the Trump folks and Michael Kelly. Uh, they didn't do that. Instead, all they did was file an emergency application, a piece of paper, and that's what was denied today. Could they have filed a certiorari petition? Yes, absolutely. But having blown it now on the application, there's no chance this is going anywhere, particularly since their application actually said, if you deny the application, Supreme Court, please treat this as a petition for certiorari. And that's why I've been saying for more than a week now, I know there have been all sorts of conspiracy theories about the Supreme Court or Justice Alito or this and that. It's all going nowhere. The only place, only person who thinks this is going somewhere is Donald Trump. That's it in Trump's mind. Also from Pennsylvania today, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court threw out the Trump campaign's attempt to get 69 votes in Bucks County uncounted. I'm not sure what Trump has against the 69 votes, but anyway, it was thrown out in a one-sentence order. Also in Georgia, he lost where his folks were trying to get thrown out the third recount. That went nowhere. And then there's one final piece of news. The cracked up, kraken, supercharged new lawsuit. This one boasts a state, kind of, bringing suit against four other states. Yes, you heard it right. The state of Texas today filed an action in the U.S. Supreme Court straight that sued the states of Pennsylvania, Georgia, Wisconsin, and Georgia, Wisconsin. And this may be the most ridiculous lawsuit I have ever seen in my life. Like, it's up there with hammerhead sharks. You're just looking at it like, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, where to start? First of all, the Texas Supreme Court lawyer, the usual one for the state of Texas, who's called the Texas Solicitor General, didn't sign this piece of paper. It's signed by Ken Paxton. Paxton is kind of the Attorney General of Texas. I say kind of because the FBA, FBI is investigating him for all sorts of corruption. And in a feat that only Donald Trump could ever beat, 
This guy, Paxton, has managed to get all eight of his top aides to go to the FBI and say Paxton is abusing the powers of his office. Now, mind you, this is the same attorney general who's already been under indictments for securities fraud for the last five years. So like normally when I'm putting a legal team together, I'm thinking I'm looking at experience, smarts, knowledge of the law. I mean, between this guy and Rudy, I'm thinking that the chief qualification to be Donald Trump's lawyer is, well, how well do you actually know the FBI? No. All right, so that's the first problem. Second, what are the claims in this case? They're claiming voting irregularities in four totally different states uh, somehow together produced election fraud. Um, these are exactly the count, the charges that have been being litigated in these now 51 different courts in which Trump's lost all but one and the one itty bitty one didn't matter. They've all been found meritless. So Texas may be bigger, but it certainly ain't brainier when it comes to this. Third, the legal papers themselves. What a mess. You can read them online. It's a 144 paragraph bill of complaints. It's in English, kind of. So as a result, the U.S. Supreme Court has asked for a response on Thursday from these four states, and then I predict a new one-sentence order from the Supreme Court. One sentence is proving to be something President Trump might need to be contemplating, both in the next 45 days from courts, as well as beyond, when he loses his immunity from prosecution as a sitting president. See you tomorrow.